Okay, I'm just checking. Okay. Um, Kelly, I think we are live. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to um, Shift Success. For those who don't know, my name's Alex. I'm the founder of Shift Success. And recently, we've been doing a, a lot of Facebook lives into our larger community where we have cops all around uh, the UK as well as members of the NHS. And of course, we have a separate cohort community for our cohort members. And recently, what we've been doing in this community is bringing in some of our own clients to Shift Success to also give you some business lessons, some mindset lessons, and to also um, inspire you, you know, to empower you that it can be done. And today I am joined by a phenomenal cohort member. Um, this person has just been an inspiration from ever since the day I've met her. She's generated hundreds of leads monthly through her business. Um, she's making thousands each month. She's increased her prices drastically. Um, she's generated thousands and thousands of followers on social media from the USA, New Zealand, and India, as well as Spain. Um, and also she's well on her way to achieving that 100,000 pound mark. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Wynn. Kelly, how are you doing? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm in my shorts and t-shirt, which is good. <laughs> good stuff. You enjoying the sun? Oh, God. You know what? This is the only thing that's getting me through this, the sun. <laughs> I think I'd go a bit crazy otherwise. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. So, um, Kelly, thanks for your time today. And what I'd like to start off by asking, I know we've, got, we've had you on the podcast show before, but for those who don't know who you are, um, <laughs> tell us a bit about yourself. What police force was you from and how long was you in the job for and what was your roles within the police? Um, I, I joined Hertfordshire Police in 2001 um, and I was about 26 at the time. Um, so I joined quite, well, not late, but later maybe than some other people. I did uh, 19 years in total. First 10 years I loved, they were just brilliant. I, I wish it had stayed that way. I'd be, I probably would still be there now. Um, and I, I did shift work for about six, seven, eight years and got promoted then. And just brilliant it was so much fun you know who who doesn't like driving around in blues and twos it's brilliant but uh then um Theresa May got a hold of the police service and the bollocks <laughs> up, basically um and um my life completely changed from that moment on my it was just full of stress um and anxiety and I wasn't enjoying it anymore so um it was time for me to leave but I just didn't know what I wanted to do uh, I did I did a number of roles. Um, I think the most hardest ones I've ever done were domestic abuse unit and uh, child exploitation. That was horrendous. Um, I only did that for about six months before my brain fell apart. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a bumpy ride at the end. But the, yeah, I, I, if it had stayed the way it was, I'd definitely still be there now. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So thanks for sharing that. We've got Jay, we've got Jamie Stenton watching. We've got Carl Christie. We've got Jason Greystone and Mark hey, Phillip. Guys, give us a like. And also, if you're watching back on replay, please do type in replay so we know you're watching it back. Um, Kelly, thanks for that. So it sounds to me you've enjoyed the job up until that point. So um, why did you start thinking about business? You know, what made you think about a different career altogether? Um. Oh God, you know what? If I'm perfectly honest, there was no way on God's earth I was ever going to work for anybody ever again. I had had the most awful, God awful bosses in my time. And I just was like, nah, if I'm leaving the police service, I'm leaving it to go and work for myself. But I also wanted that work life balance that the police service pretend they give us, but they don't give us. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to be able to take my child to school and pick her up. Um, I also had uh, I had to, I had my beagles then, so I wanted to be with them. Um, so yeah, I and also um, I don't know. I kind I've got this kind of personality that I don't. It sounds big headed, maybe. I don't know if that's the right word, but I feel like I can do things better than most people. So um, I was like, the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if I have my own business. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. So. Um, what happened? So what was the transition like? Because um, you was thinking about starting a business before we met. So oh. did you decide to just leave or did you start your business whilst working in the job? How, how did that look like? Um, 
I started off with trying to figure out what I loved because um, I knew that I wanted to leave the job for something that I loved. I wasn't just going to leave it just for money. Um, and I really loved reading. Love it. I read lots and lots of books. So I then um, trained to be a, a copy editor mm-hmm. um, and I worked for Fiverr for a little while. So um uh, and I used to do content editing and copy editing and it was okay. I loved it, but um, the money wasn't great and I was putting in a lot of hours. So then I thought to myself, what else can I do? Um, that can, I can do around being a police officer as well. So I have, I have painted, I have crafted, I have read, oh, I've written two erotica books. You didn't know that, did you? I, did, I didn't know that. Don't make me blush <laughs> live, <laughs> live on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, under the pseudonym of Casey Williams, if anyone ever wants to go and have a look wow. at them, they are wow. on Amazon. Um, oh, what else have I done? Oh my God, I can't think what else I've done. Oh, I trained in Reiki, Indian head massage, you know, all of those things. I thought, well, do you know what? I'd quite like to do that. Wow. But then every time I tried them, or oh, did counselling as well, I've done everything. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, 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 tr- I try them out because that was the same, my philosophy with the police. It was, I've got to do it. And if I don't enjoy it, at least I know I've done it. So mm. that's what I did. And I did that with all of these little businesses that I started. But there was always something that I didn't quite, enjoy about it it was still that pit of anxiety in my stomach and I was like I don't want to feel that way so um yeah I kind of fell into dog training and it's the best thing that I've ever done in my life really but yeah I did do it alongside my police work I um I came out of the pension because I knew there was no point me paying into it so I came out of that probably in around 2016 and that allowed me to then reduce my hours at work. So I had an extra rest day off every week. Um, and then I transitioned from that into a, a career break. So I took a year's career break uh, and then I left and then I resigned. But wow. you know what? Uh, I don't know if Jack's watching this because he is part of um, this group. <laughs> <laughs> but when I took that career break, I only took it for him. I, I wanted to leave. <laughs> I wanted to leave back then, but uh, yeah, if you're there, Bubs, I only did it for you. <laughs> Jack, if you're watching, you've uh, you've heard it all now. <laughs> um, so that is a phenomenal um, strategy. So so essentially, what you've done, you've you knew your career in the job wasn't going to be. You didn't want to pursue that for the next you know 10, 20 years in the job. So what you did was pull out your pension, keep that money for yourself, which then supported your living, which then allowed you to also pull out a day from the police, giving back your time so yeah. you can then put into business. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I didn't lose a hell of a lot of salary, to be honest. And mm. I was making it up at the time with my copy editing and also the pension. Um, but I the reason why I had to leave in the end was because I was struggling with my mental health really badly Mm. I was diagnosed with PTSD at the end of 2016 um I thought it was just work-related stress because I kept falling over I'd have three weeks off here two months off here and I'd always put it down to work-related stress but eventually I saw um a head shrink who told me I was uh, I had I had post-traumatic stress disorder and I just thought because at that point I wasn't public facing and there was even now if I think about public facing work it gives me the heebie-jeebies mm. so I knew I couldn't I can't be a police officer and not have public facing um so that was when I really started to go ha- like hammer and tong just to wow. get myself out of the job that's amazing it sounds to me you're very strategic you obviously thought that through that that strategy is a much safer way because you're mm. actually just cushioning yourself from a financial aspect um do you mind, you know, with regards to PTSD, because there's a lot of officers who do have PTSD and also go through mental health problems. Um, how did, you know, first of all, how did you develop PTSD? And, and first and lastly, how did you kind of, how do you manage it right now? Um, so mine, my PTSD, and this might be true for quite a lot of people, is, surround, is um, encompassing death. Um, as police officers, we see and uh, we'll, yeah, we see and experience a lot of death, um, whether that's through road crashes, sudden deaths, um, suicides, that kind of thing. But for me, um, mine co- uh, started when I lost three colleagues um, over a six week period. And that's when, when I did all my um, therapy, 
that's what they they got it back to that's where it started and then every kind of thing that happened after that impacted on my brain so I lost my inspector to sudden adult death syndrome they just didn't know what killed him um two weeks later my sergeant had a heart attack in the office at work and died and then another two weeks after that the force chaplain that had been helping us get through those two deaths um oh gives me the EBGB's talking about it um he passed away at home so we didn't have any time to grieve we just had to get on with it we'd have two days off and then obviously we'd be out back at work so to experience that amount of grief and to experience that amount those amount of funerals you know they were proper all of them police funerals as well it was really difficult um and I never really sought any help over it and then when I then would go to jobs um, they would completely overwhelm me. So it got to a point where my anxiety was so bad at the end of 2016 that I wasn't, I wasn't able to leave the house. Um, and a lot of the time we've got like a, a townhouse and um, the top floor is self-contained. So there's a bathroom and there's a bedroom in there. And I remember just spending a whole week up there and I just come down for food. I just didn't want to be around people. And I just thought, I've got to get out of this. This is not right. I had a child who was, I think she was about six or seven at the time. She's 10 now. And um, I, I, yeah, I needed to get out of the job. And Because like, I knew that I could get the help, but the issues would still be there, really. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And, and, you know, how did you at least kind of deal with that? I believe uh, someone special came in your life, which was Daisy. Yeah, um, my big dog. Yeah, do you want to talk about how you found Daisy and how that helped you? Yeah, well, she um, uh, came into my life at the beginning of 2017. And it was all down to the fact that um, I'm quite a um, proactive person when it comes to my mental health, because I did suffer with uh, postnatal with my child as well. So I've always been quite proactive. I need to get myself better. Um, so I went online to find out what kind of things you could do to get her help for PTSD. And in America and Canada, they have PTSD dogs um, for police, but we don't have them here. We have them like for the armed services. But I could see all the benefits of having a dog. And one of them was it was going to get me out of the house um, and it was going to get me exercising because those were the two things I wasn't doing. Um, but also having, I knew from previous experience from when I was a kid and um, my family had dogs, they don't tell you to pull yourself together. They don't tell you uh, it's all in your head. They uh, wanna, they love you. They wanna comfort you and all of those things. So um, I spent a good deal of time persuading my husband <laughs> that I needed a dog. Um, all he kept saying to me was, yeah, but I don't like dogs. I only like cats. Oh God, you know. Uh, so I finally got Daisy. Um, he actually found her for me. He'd, there was an advert on Facebook for a detective, uh, a detective constable in another police station that wanted to rehome her. Um, and uh, yeah, we, I made an appointment to go and see her that night. And uh, I already knew she was mine, even if my husband didn't, <laughs> she was gonna be mine. It was it love um, at first sight? It was. Oh my gosh, she was beautiful. And I've always loved beagles anyway. I like the looks of them. Um, she was crazy. She was super, super crazy. But And then I got home and my world just collapsed because my daughter said to me, I don't like her. I don't want her. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, she wanted the chihuahua. I was like, well, no, I have a chihuahua. That's not happening. Um, so I, I, then maybe this was the start of my entrepreneurial uh, brain set or mindset but I was like well, how the hell do I get this kid to like this dog <laughs> so I um said to her should we just test her should we have her for the weekend no full well she was never going back yeah. um so uh <laughs> Mamaya was like yeah all right mum and then literally we got home that night and they fell in love and that oh. was it so yeah amazing amazing stuff so yeah. up to this point we know about your police career your decisions for thinking about a new um career as a business owner and entrepreneur um and also about the challenges you've been through in regards to ptsd and also introducing J daisy into your life um if i was to meet you in a bar and mm -hmm. I was to ask you what you would do how what would you say you do now um actually funny enough people do ask me that <laughs> so, <laughs> i uh not that I'm getting chatted up or anything, you know. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack. Um, good old Jack, yeah. Um, uh, I would tell them that um, I specialise and only exclusively work with Beagle training 
and their behaviour. Um, uh, and that I am literally the only Beagle trainer in the whole of the UK. So, wow. yeah. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, and I can remember speaking to you as well. And, and you know, you you hold firm as one of your mentors. I can remember asking you, um, you are positioned very well in the marketplace as the Beagle Lady. Everyone knows who you are now in your space. And I can remember asking you when you first started to think about your brand more. Um, I said, you know, you know, you're thinking about going into different breeds in the future, and you said, No, I want to stick with <laughs> beagles, I want to be the beagle lady, and you've stuck with that, and that's something that you put a stake in the ground, which is just commendable. Um, talk to me about you know your following because you know when you first started Shift Success, I think you had less than about 1,000 people following you. Now you've you know 5,000 plus, I believe, in your group. Yeah, five and a, nearly five and a half now. So and they, wow. and rapidly, I think we we grow by about 50 every day at the moment. Bloody hell! So, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Massive. It's phenomenal. Is that global as well? Like you've got New Zealand, you've got India, mm. Spain. Oh, it's, it's like, yeah, they're they're in Portugal, um, Hungary, um, where else? India. Yeah, they're all over, all over the world now. And it's lovely because uh, I get to speak to and help train dogs because I can do most of my stuff online. So, mm. you know, the, the wonders of Zoom and FaceTime is just has just completely opened everything up to a dog trainer now. Um, Amazing. Mm, yes it yeah. is. so with regards to getting that type of followership like that because that is big what one of the things that you do and i know what you do but for those who are watching one thing you're very consistent with is your content getting yourself out there do you want to yeah. share some with people what you do um yeah so uh not i've done a lot of research into social media and obviously taking some guidance from you guys as well. And the thing is, is and it is like what you always say, it's that no, no like and trust. So whether you like video or not, and if you don't like video, tough tips, you've got to get on it. You've got to be, you've, you've literally have to get on video because people want to see you. They want to see what you look like, what you sound like, whether you come across as genuine. And also you, when you're on video, I'm quite a handsy person, you know, blah. and then um, you, you've got everything. So it's your body language, your tone and the words that you use, which is what everyone tells us is what we should be doing. You know, the, what we do when we have conversations. So people then start to like you and go, yeah, she, she's quite good. I think she would, she would be really good to tra train my beagle. So I try to do a video every day. Um, and if not, then I'll write some content up um, about, um, usually quite topical so at the moment the, the main topics at the moment are separation anxiety because of the fact that we're in lockdown and most of the dogs are going to really struggle when we go back to work so I'll write some guidance around that and suggest some tips um, and uh, and then I spend a lot of time on social media this is the thing as well is that you if you decide to go onto social media and build a following like I have in the beginning and even probably now you have to put in two, three, four hours a day um, and you're not getting paid for it, but you you are reaping the benefits later on like I am now. You know, mm. I, I think I didn't get my first Beagle client until my group had been running about three or four months. Mm. So you've got to be very, very persistent and very, very um, uh, patient. Definitely you've got a lot of patience. Amazing, amazing stuff. <laughs> Who are your typical customers? So we know beagle owners, but what, what type of beagles? We've got someone called Amanda who's watching. And Amanda said uh, she was put off uh, by considering owning a beagle and worn off by vets as they've been my favorite breed since childhood. And so happy she's been able to work with dogs who are so misunderstood. She's experienced yeah. this with ferrets. And yeah. Uh, it's so hard to break down barriers. Uh, I found Kelly by chance and I was so nervous with off lead training. So happy for Kelly. She's amazing. Um, oh, I know who Amanda is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got, awesome. So, um, so who is your typical customer? Is it, um, you know, a beagle who's been naughty, but what type of behaviors are they actually doing? Well, typically the, the, I think there's three main behaviors I work with and that is um, separation anxiety. I work with, aggression so resource guarding or um behavioral aggression and i work what's the other one i work with a lot oh god 
yapping on a lead. I bet your dash hounds do that as well. <laughs> they do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine the difference between your little dog and, and a really big beagle? Yeah. They look like they're, they're savages. So, <laughs> so that's one of the mate that I would say actually that is my top behavior that I deal with massively. Mm. Amazing. And how do, you, do you, how do you solve those? Is it, you know, do you, do you train the, the, the actual owner or do you train the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I see myself as kind of like, um, Katie's the same. Katie's saying what, uh, say, well, uh, we're coaches and we coach the human, um, because it's not, it's not their fault. You know, and it wasn't my fault when I first got Daisy. I had to learn how to deal with her behaviour. Um, it is basically, um, yeah, some people just haven't got a clue. <laughs> they yeah. really haven't. And you have got to just very tactfully and very nicely say, well, if you just do this and don't do this, then this <laughs> happens, you know. So, yeah, yeah. But Beagles, but, you know, Amanda's right. A lot of vets are... Um, very negative about beagles and a lot of dog trainers are negative about beagles and they they will call them stubborn selfish and they will say they're untrainable and that's just not the case um my two are exceptionally intelligent well maybe billy not so much but daisy is um and are very trainable but they have to have their own style of training you can't train a beagle like they're a labrador because labradors are very much human centered Whereas beagles are like, I don't need you. I just need to follow that scent. So you have got to train them very, very differently. And they're very, very reward-based dogs as well. So they need food. Well, then doesn't, I do. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff. So you also had a, um, you used to also look after beagles as well in, in person. So you used to um, look after when people used to go away yeah. you know, for their day jobs or on holiday. But due to the coronavirus, that's been put on pause for the time being. Um, yeah. I know we've had conversations about this in that moment Kelly because that was a great income for yourself in that moment this, this is why I think you are successful this is why I think it separates you from a lot of people out there you could have quite easily have gone you know I'm not doing anything you right? I'm just gonna let this all blow over but instead you grabbed business by the balls and you went right I'm going this way now no yeah. why did you think about it? what made you think you know what I'm going to serve clients who are online and as a result, you're making sales, you know, you're, you're actually, you know, growing and thriving in this time. So what made you, you know, make that change? Because a lot of people are going to spry for this. <laughs> so um, this is another one if Jack's watching. Um, <laughs> he wanted me to go and get a job. And I was like, no fucking way am I getting a job. <laughs> Poor Jack. <laughs> Poor Jack. Sorry, yeah. Jack. Well, I'm like, are you having a laugh? He even suggested I took a six month contract with Hearts Police. I was like, I'm having a cold sweat. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'll be, I'll be totally and utterly honest that when, um, when my business, uh, so the the daycare and the boarding went overnight, I I did fall apart. I was, uh, I'm the, sorry, the kid. I told you there'd be a kid in here at some point. Go away. <laughs> <No problem. laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i fell apart i was really really down for for probably i wouldn't say more than a week no it wasn't a week it was a couple of days um and i just thought what the fudging hell am i gonna do you know i i, I that was like three grand a month gone in 24 hours mm. um so Obviously, I had the motivation that my husband wanted me to get a job. He even suggested I went and work for Tesco's. I was like, no, sorry, this isn't happening. Um, so I, I had to, I'd started dabbling with online anyway, because a lot of my beagles um, are not in everybody's homes. So you can see a cockapoo every five seconds, but a beagle, they're, you know, you don't see them very, very rarely. And predominantly, a lot of my beagle owners are, uh, live up north. Um, because they've got a lot of open space some of them still use them for hunting so I had to uh, design a package to service those people so I would, I'd already dabbled so when um, this all happened I just quickly changed that to online so um, it's not ideal because I'd much rather go out and see the dog uh, when I do online training I rarely see see the dog unless I go can you can you put the camera on your beagle so I can have a look at it please <laughs> um but uh eventually I'll be able to go back to seeing people again um 
which which is it which is better because I, I for me I watch the dog I know the dog's body language and know what's going on in its head when I watch it um so I have to rely on the human <laughs> he probably isn't telling me the truth so yeah, <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah. No, it's inspiration. You, know, it's, you are thriving and it's a great to see. Um, with regards to your prices, so since when we first met, you was vastly undercharging. Um, <laughs> how does it feel knowing what you're charging now compared to what you was charging? Uh, it, it's definitely a mindset. Um, and uh, to be honest, I still struggle with it now. Um, and I know I still need to put my prices up again. Um, but one you tend to compare yourself to everybody else so so and so down the road is only charging 50 pounds for a session so that's what i should be charging um i remember coming to you and saying how the hell can i sell a package for 950 pounds when graham who is a celebrity on the tv is only sending it for 750 <laughs> you know so it is it was this massive massive yeah. mindset um and uh yeah i i still need to put my prices up i know i do yeah. But how did it make you feel like knowing that, you know, you was undercharging for all those years where you could have, well, all those months where you could have gone, you know, I could have gone for 950 straight away. Cause a lot of people yeah. do undervalue themselves. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's a dog. Oh, <laughs> here he is. There's here Billy. <laughs> yeah. He was off whining. That's why they've just shoved him in the bedroom oh, with me. Bless, bless him. Uh, yeah. I, I don't regret it because the experience I got from Obviously, because because my prices were so low, I was able to help a lot more people. Um, so I I and that and that was when I was um, dog training all dog breeds. So um, I did learn a lot in that time, and I probably would I have learned the same amount if I'd done had higher prices. Probably not so much. Mm. The other thing it did help me with, and I like to see the positive in everything, um, is that. Uh, it was, it was I quickly realized I didn't, I didn't want to work with every dog yeah. um and that's how I then came to the conclusion that I just wanted to work with beagles so but yeah, yeah the money the money's nice um but I, I love I just love what I do you do yeah you're so yeah. passionate it comes through all the time so talking yeah. about you know your income from because a lot of people the biggest worry a lot of cops find or a lot of people in the NHS find is that they've got this security and they're still miserable and they're unhappy they're not seeing their kids um but it's a big thing about the money they want to make sure the money's there how yeah. does for anyone watching this you know what kind of knowledge bombs can you give someone because you obviously you was a, i think you know you was in the police earning probably about forty thousand pounds you, you was yeah. now you was achieving that in business over forty thousand yeah. pounds from the value you did in the police to now you know being the captain of your own destiny from a value perspective how does that make you feel that you're earning more from your own business now oh it's just it's a completely different feeling. It's like the 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 um the fact that I have no cap now to my uh, salary. I mean, the police service. The only way I could increase my salary was to get promoted, and I'd rather sell my soul than have done that. So uh, I um yeah now the world's my oyster so i can do what the hell i like when i want and that's the great thing even now with the coronavirus um i'm still able to work um and get paid yeah. you know so Amazing. yeah yeah it's great the one thing i would uh, it has just popped into my head which um which i would if people have got the guts to do this is that uh we took some money out of my mortgage Mm. So we've got quite a lot of equity um, and it was like, well, why don't we just use some of that to prop me up mm -hmm. as I build, build my business? And to be honest, um, it lasted a lot longer than what we thought it would because I was able to then go on my career break. I was then able to start doing what I wanted to do. So we didn't need to, need to use it as much, but I'm, um, yeah, I mean, it's there, use it. And you know what I think I'll, payments went up by about 30 pound a month it was something ridiculous like that so wow. yeah you've got equity in your house and you can afford the the repayments i'd i'd use that definitely amazing amazing stuff um kelly what's some of the mindset um in fact what's some of the skill sets that you've had as a police officer that you've transferred into building your very own company that's really helped you mm. um God, lots of things really. Cause I, I, you know, there was a time a few years ago where they were talking about making police officers redundant. 
well, how the hell are you supposed to do that? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and everyone at work was in the sheer panic mode. And um, I used to sit down with them and go, look, you don't need to worry. You've got this skill set, this, 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 and this. You will find a job anywhere. And it's exactly the same in business. So communication skills. Um, we have the um, patience sometimes of a saint and you've got to have that in business you what else do we use negotiation we've got negotiation skills um which help us with sales and marketing um what else do we we do oh like we if, if you're a team leader as well like i was um as your business grows and as as mine has i've been able to take on some volunteers so being able to talk to them and and train them and all that kind of thing so they I think people get a bit worried that because they're police officers that's the only thing they can ever do in life and it so isn't there is so much out there and even if you want to I mean this is obviously about business but if people want that security there are jobs out there that they can take their skills into the into the private sector and they'll be a hell of a lot happier than what they are now amazing amazing advice um, what's some of the mindset differences that you've experienced from working in the job compared to now running your own business? Um, in the beginning, uh, I found it really hard to transition because we are, uh, as a police officer, and particularly if you worked, I worked on a unit that was quite fast paced. So that's what you did. You just worked and worked off your your nerves and your anxiety. And, you know, sometimes you'd have to wait four hours to go to the toilet and you wouldn't eat your dinner and stuff like that. So when I started to run my own business, I'd feel guilty if I if I had lunch, you know, and um, and I'd feel guilty if I picked up a book and read it. So it took me a while to get my mindset around that one. But now my mindset um, around business is I couldn't do anything else, really. I the the fact that I can come and go as I please no one tells me if I can be sick no one tells me um um, you can't have annual leave because two police officers have already got it off um Mm -hmm. I just I I could never go back to working again I definitely would recommend if you want your own life you have to own a business Mm. and what what I was going to say the next question was you know what does your family life look like now? If Jack's watching, you know, what, are you spending more time with family now you're outside of the job? I'm probably going to get divorced now, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, so I had to have one thing that, that did happen to me. And I think, yeah, this did happen whilst I was on the shift to success um, course was I had a bit of a, another breakdown. So mm. I had to have, 12 weeks of something called EMDR Mm. um and that was because I hadn't still dealt with what had gone on in the police service and so now um, my family life is completely different you know my kid absolutely loves the fact I'm around at the weekends in the evenings because I used to do late turns um I'm here for every single holiday she has uh, and I think Jack likes it because he doesn't have to do the school runs anymore. So I think mean, he's quite chuffed about that one. So yeah, I'd, I, yeah, definitely a better way of life. And my mental health is 150% better. Just, you know, my, the anxiety has gone. Um, and that was what I was suffering with was the anxiety that was terrible. Amazing. Amazing. But you know what I did? I did want to say actually, there's a lot of people out there at the moment that are struggling with the coronavirus and everything. And I really, really get that. And I understand that people are stressed, anxious, depressed. But I've not, other than having a couple of low days, I've not felt any of that. And I, and I, I, want, I wonder if that's because as police officers, we've dealt with horrendous things or whether it is just, I just, I just believe that this will all go away and we'll all go back to normal and we'll all have lovely businesses. I just yeah. don't know. Don't know what you, happened to me. My mindset's completely changed. You know, it's important. If you, you get what you um, focus on, I think you're focused on future. You're thinking visionary. You're thinking about mm. success. You're thinking about pivoting and thriving. Whereas a lot of people out there in the media and general Facebook, they will be all doom and gloom and they will focus on, oh, this is where I am and I can't move. Whereas if you start transitioning to think about your vision you're just going to adapt on that so that's why you're thriving right that's that's an amazing thing it's a great lesson yeah. as well that everyone can take um 
so as a re- as a result of of joining Shift Success, you know, what does your life look like now? What how do you feel about that life? Uh, I would I would absolutely one hundred percent know that if I hadn't joined Shift of Success, I wouldn't have the Beagle business I have now, and I put that down to two things. One, it was a thought that just kept going round and round and round and round in my head. I just want to work with beagles but everyone thinks I'm nuts because I'd, I'd voiced it to family and friends and they were like why would you want to pigeonhole yourself into all of this and why you know you won't get any work and all of that kind of thing so when um Katie introduced me to you <laughs> I was like I really really need him to tell me that this is a this is a good idea I was literally shaking when I rung you because if you told me that this was a really crappy idea that would have just that would have you know it, my world would have imploded basically but you didn't you said it was a brilliant idea and I was like where's my credit card (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah I I I, and I if I'd done this on my own um I would have given up because particularly around the social media type kind of thing uh it started off really slow um so I probably had a couple of hundred people but that that was over maybe three or four months but then after I started to really work on that because of everything I was learning through shift to success, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm nearly 50 odd members a day and sometimes more depending on because what happens is some people will um, tag my group in another Beagle group. Mm-hmm. So they'll go, Oh, Kelly wins awesome. She'll help you with this. And then um, I then get an influx of member requests. Mm. So I, I actually don't do any marketing at the moment because my my um, group do it for me. So wow, you've got yeah. you've got almost a customer. You've got a sales force out there who are almost yeah. recommending you and bringing people to you, right? Yeah, yeah. On a on a on a daily basis, I, you know, you know, you get tagged, don't you, in um, on Facebook, and I go into the sites, and I'm sure I'm probably really pissing one person off because. <laughs> Um, she joined my group and um, you know about her she was the one who was really negative about my style of training she was oh you know online is is dangerous and da 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 and you know you can't train a dog online well she runs one of the other beagle groups that most of my clients come from um, I bet she's bloody biting her tongue now because she's a dog trainer so yeah. what are you gonna do love you need to go online don't you yeah, <laughs> yeah you make me laugh Kelly that's can amazing I, can I think- fingers up to us <laughs> <laughs> it's true though it's those who are fixed in their way and they don't see you know, you've, as an entrepreneur you've got to be flexible in your approach okay you never change the goal whatever that vision is for yourself that goal it's okay to have that and that's the stake in the ground but you've got to be flexible to go to that vision you know think if, like you get a left hook from coronavirus or you know something else that happens come like you've got to be able to adapt and overcome that and not just say oh you know i can't do this because i think this right we've got a mission we've yeah. got a vision that we need to accomplish um with, what's been some of your highlights of your entrepreneurial joke so far I know you've only been with us a year but in that year what would you say has been a highlight for you uh definitely everybody who is on this course um the police service is uh, for quite a negative environment very um and a lot of people will jump all over you to get promoted um I've been used a lot in people's evidence because they needed to show that they the discipline someone um so having a bunch of people who want you to succeed and support you and tell you well done um that is a massive thing um for me and having I call them my family now because they are you know I tell them some of my biggest accomplishments that I don't even tell my my own family Mm. um but also the fact that I had a little idea and now it's a really big 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 thing um I think when I spoke to my first person abroad and it was a chap in Texas and the only reason why he emailed me and he started off dear ma'am and I was like who the hell calls people ma'am? <laughs> and, then, and then I was like and then he, I got down to the bottom and it went uh, Houston Texas I'm like ah so uh, when I spoke to him and he was talking to me like I've been doing this for years I was like yeah this is this is cool I like this amazing amazing stuff incredibly so inspiring um where do you see yourself in the future where do you want to take 
yourself and your Beagle training? What, what's that vision look like for you, Kelly, in the next five years? Um, so I, I want to be able to help everybody. It's just how I am, how I'm made up. That's why I joined the, the police service. So I am creating a online package for people to subscribe to. So, so those that can't afford me in person or online can subscribe, subscribe to that. Then um, my online, I'm going to develop so that I can help people all over the world. Um, and then my face-to-face -face, um, will be obviously the top end of, of what I offer people. Um, and I would, I'm, I'm desperate, right? I think this will happen one day that someone from like America goes, I need you to come and train my beagle. I'll pay your flight, I'll pay your hotel and I'll give you five grand. I'll be like, yes, I'll need it. So that's, that's my aim in life. Yeah, that, that's global world domination that's my plan amazing amazing stuff and i have every bit of faith that you're going to get there kelly so it's, uh, it's been an inspiration i know you've you know you've got a lot of comments a lot of watching people watching right now and um you know you inspire myself the team i know the cohort members as well are really inspired by your story and your success um where can people reach out to you kelly and find out more about you uh, oh well, I'm on I'm on every social media platform. I'm on YouTube as the Beagle Lady, um, and I have got a website, thebeaglelady.com. Um, yeah, just literally, like my daughter loves doing this now. She Google's the Beagle Lady, and like the whole everything comes up uh, with me. Mum, look, you're on Google! Yay! <laughs> so, that so, must yeah, feel good, yeah, right? Oh, God, yeah, she, yeah. Oh, it was good for me, but I think she was more impressed that her mum was on Google. So. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, uh, my group um, uh, is Behavioural Health for Beagles, but yeah, Beagle Lady. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Uh -huh. Kelly, um, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It's great to yeah, see that welcome. you're adapting, you're overcoming, you're thriving. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, you know, you've inspired myself, the team, and also the cohorts, and keep being you. You know, it's uh, it's been a fun interview, um, and I'm sure you're going to get lots more questions. <laughs> and for those who have got questions after this, please do drop them in the comments below. We'll love to um, answer them for you. And if you watch on replay, please do type in replay as well. Kelly, thank you so much. Enjoy the sun. Uh, I hope Jack takes Are it easy on you. And um, I will speak to you very soon. <laughs> take care. I think what I'll do is I'll take him a beer. That might stop. Okay, See you later. Bye. That, that will work. Take care. Bye-bye.